This is What a Weird Week, the one with big onions. Hi, everybody, it's weird. This is like crazy being here. Like really weird, weird tale. Well, I got a great show for you today with some wonderful weird stuff. Hi, friends, I'm Scott, and this is the What a Weird Week show about weird stuff from this week's news. If you want the photos or podcast stuff or video stuff, just click show notes.page, show notes.page. Okay, here comes the top 10 for Season 4, Episode 52, first published on Friday, September 22nd, 2023. 10. Getting things started this week is Large Onion Makes News, Everyone Cries. Gareth Griffin in the UK has grown an almost 20-pound onion that's unofficially the biggest onion ever recorded. It is larger than Gareth's head. The old record for a big onion was 19 pounds-ish. The onion still needs to be given the official all-clear from the Guinness folks. And then who knows, what, are you making uh, French onion soup? Onion rings? Or are you just maybe having it bronzed? Not as delicious, but an option. Nine. Number nine, Flaming Hooper breaks world record. The new record is eight. On fire, spinning hula hoops. Congratulations to Grace Good, who is a professional hoop performer and gives audiences a thrill with hooping feats like spinning eight flaming hoops at the same time. Grace also set another hooping record for most hula hoops spun simultaneously while balancing on a giant rolling globe. That record, 28 hula hoops. She had 28 hula hoops going at once while standing on a ball, you guys. That's one I wouldn't try. I mean, you got to train a bit for that one. First, you got to get the 28 hula hoops going. You got to get the dexterity for that. That's not something you can just get off the couch and start doing. You got to work your way up to it, I would imagine. And then the whole balancing on a rolling, giant rolling globe, as the Guinness Book of World Records puts it. I mean, first of all, where are you going to purchase that giant rolling globe? You probably want to get a quality one and pay a little extra. I don't, anyway, these are all questions for later on. First, let's work on one hula hoop that is not on fire, and then we'll get up to fire and globes and the rest of it. Hey, you guys, let's do this one. No, wait, don't. Uh, sorry, I started saying don't try this at home. Danger. You're listening to What a Weird Week, a show inspired by weirdness in the news. Eight. Number eight this week. Mistake by ticket seller results in big lotto win. A fellow in Maryland was given the wrong ticket and won $580,000. I don't know if you believe in fate and all that stuff, but listen to this. So he goes to the gas station to buy five Cash for Life tickets. The store employee rang in one multi-match instead. And then there was all this trouble voiding the mistake, so the ticket buyer said, it's all good. That's me paraphrasing. The wrong ticket turned out to be the big winner. $580,000. And the store gets a cool thousand bucks for selling that ticket, too. That story messed me up the most of all the stories we had this week because it makes you wonder about all of the choices you have every day. Happy accidents. Things when they... Uh, mess up your order and you get sausage instead of bacon in your breakfast sandwich. Was it meant to be? Now I question everything. So my advice, don't think about it too hard. Ooh, I could really go for a breakfast sandwich right now, though. Seven. Number seven, artists' art wasn't really art? Question mark? They have to give the money back. Uh, we talked about this story when it happened, and now the courts have ruled on it. An artist in Denmark has to pay back around $72,000 to the museum that hired him to do some kind of artwork. The artwork was supposed to incorporate a bunch of banknotes, but the artist kept those banknotes and instead gave the museum a couple blank canvases. Artist is quoted in the story as saying, The work is that I have taken their money. That's an actual quote from the artist. By the way, the artwork was called Take the Money and Run. If you want to see the artwork, I mean, just imagine a you know white canvas and you've seen it. You've seen one of the most famous artworks of the modern era. It's certainly got a lot of publicity. I don't know 
art that much, but it seems quite famous to me. Anyway, blank canvas, take the money and run. stories from this week's news. What a weird week. Six. Number six this week is surfing snake incident results in big fine. A fella in Australia took his snake out on the surfboard. The video went viral. Video got a lot of attention, also the attention of wildlife authorities, and now the snake owner has been fined over $2,000. He says the snake didn't even hiss. So, you know, the snake the snake was having fun. The snake only hisses when it's not having fun, you guys. Authorities say surfing puts the snake under unnecessary stress. That's me sort of paraphrasing, but if you want to see a photo of the snake, I mean, imagine a snake on a surfboard. There you go, but we do have a photo if you want to click the show notes or go to shownotes.page. Five. Number five, these train wrestlers, you guys, pro wrestlers, recently in the news for fighting on a Japanese bullet train. Imagine you're seated on the train, it's doing maybe 180 miles an hour, and these wrestlers come down the aisle bringing the hurt. It happened. And the train was packed. But the people on the train were there to see the wrestling. It was a wrestling event, you guys. A weird venue, though. DDT Pro Wrestling put the event on. Pro Wrestling in the aisle of a train. They've had a few weird events like this. I would call them unusual venues. You know, like wrestling in a bookshop. That was one of the things they did. Anyway, congratulations to Minoru Suzuki, who won that match against Sanshiro Tagaji. I probably got both of those wrong, but anyway, train match wrestling, you guys. Counting down the 10 weird news stories of the week, this is the What a Weird Week show. Four. Number four in our top 10 is WTF. Why the, what the Fanta? Why the face? No, what the Fanta? This is a publicity stunt. I'm not making that part up. The WTF is all from the Fanta folks. This is a publicity stunt where Fanta comes out with a limited edition pop or soda or soft drink for the Halloween season. And it's a mystery flavor that will turn your tongue black. And it's called What the Fanta. It's a zero sugar mystery drink, by the way. In most cases, if you get it in the cans or bottles, zero sugar. You can get it in Coke Freestyle machines. This is USA and Canada. Coke Freestyle machines, you can get the zero sugar or the sugar kind. If that doesn't matter, the turning your tongue black. That's the Let's focus back in on that part, the WTF drink. Last year, the mystery flavor turned out to be orange cream. So this is a wait and see. What will it be? And WTF. Three. Number three, beer foam study. How do you get a grant to study beer? Asking for a friend. New study says foamy beer is good for flavor, according to research published in the Journal of the American Society of Brewing Chemists. That foam on your beer sends flavor bubbles to your nose. That's me paraphrasing some scientific document, so not a scientist, you guys. But the flavor bubbles go to your nose, and that makes the beer taste better. Foam locks in some of the CO2 that would normally escape your beer, and that locks in the flavor, essentially. Again, not a scientist. Also, I'm on the wagon, so I don't even have a cursory knowledge of this. I am completely unqualified. Through their testing, the researchers were able to determine that foamy beer is almost twice as aromatic as no foam beer, and that foam gives the beer a, quote, multi-sensory drinking experience. Article also links to former beer studies that seem to indicate that beer tops the list of foods that make you happy, 
and that beer may help stave off Alzheimer's disease. So if you want all of that, read the the link is in the show notes. You can read that article, New York Post. This is the What a Weird Week show. It's all about weird news, baby. Number two in our top 10 list of weird news items of the week. Bargain painting bought for four bucks sells for around $190,000. I love articles like this. This is the dream. To me, you could argue perhaps the dream is work hard at something you love and you'll be a success. But also you could argue the dream is Spend four bucks on a picture at a thrift store and auction it off for almost $200,000. Credit to the writer of this one, Hoops, over at UPI's Weird News Division, uh, Ben Hooper, the author of this article. Painting was bought for $4 at a thrift store in New Hampshire. It turned out it was a long lost piece of art from an artist named N.C. Wyeth. From 1939, this painting is one of four like it in the world. It depicts a young lady and an older lady having some kind of a stare down. That's me paraphrasing. I am not an art historian. But if you don't have a chance to click the link and read the story and see the painting, just imagine young lady, older lady, stare down. The owner of the painting was a lady who bought it for four bucks, had it on her wall. And then one day, this is what you hear more and more, you guys, a photo got shared on Facebook. Someone in the comments suggested, hey, that could be worth something. Get that checked out at the museum, maybe. That's me paraphrasing, but that's kind of how it went down. Last week, week, recap. recap. This is the portion of the show where we recap last week's top 10. If you missed it, it's still online. You can check it out. Show notes.page to find all the show stuff. Number 10 last week was Man from Pennsylvania sees 777 theater movies in one year. Number 9, Chopping Chopper Chops a Lot. Number 8, Little Girl Finds Big Old Diamond and Makes News. Number 7, What is the mystery golden orb they've discovered in the ocean? That was my favorite, I think, last week. Number 6, When you buy a cursed painting, the important thing is to come to grips with the fact it's cursed as soon as possible and then return it. That was the longest headline of last week. Number five, Chico the Cockatoo in the news after the Guinness Book of World Records article about the bird speed scoot record. Number four, Lady in Maryland uses license plate to pick lotto numbers, wins $50,000. She hated her license number, by the way, you guys, if you didn't catch that show last week. Number three was River of Wine Floods Portuguese Streets. Number two, teen from India has record-breaking long hair. And number one last week, Mystery Alien Mummies and Mexico's Congress. Hang on, number one for this week is next. The What a Weird Week show, counting down 10 of the weirdest news items of the week. One. Here we go. Number one this week is boot throwing world record attempt. This happened during the National Plowing Championships in Ireland from the article in Farming Life. Excitement Excitement was in the air as the countdown began. At the signal, participants launched their Wellington boots into the air in unison. Hundreds of Wellingtons flew through the air, which was a sight to behold in itself. I imagine it was 995 people threw their wellies, you know, rubber boots, threw them in the air at the same time. And once the Guinness folks certify it, that's a world record for, quote, 
most person simultaneously throwing Wellington boots. My question, though, I got wondering, do you bring a spare boot to something like this, or do you throw one of the boots you wore there? I imagine it's a very satisfying thing to just whip your boot. Okay, we'll wrap up there, but I appreciate you listening to the What a Weird Week show. You can get everything we talk about if you want show notes or do a deeper dive into these stories, or if you want podcast stuff videos. It's all at shownotes.page. Check out shownotes.page. Also, streaming on weekends, Funhouse Radio. Ask your smart speaker to play Funhouse Radio, and on weekends, you can catch the What a Weird Week show. Hope you have a good week. Maybe a little weird also. Catch you next time.